And another thing is the expanded playoff in college football. Before, when it was a four-team playoff, there were six or maybe seven teams that could recruit to the playoff, and the top 50 players went to all of those schools. Now it's going to be a top 20 teams, and those same top 50 players is going to be spread out a little bit more. So in 2025, the best team in the country would not hold a candle to the 2019 LSU team. So it's going to cause parity even a little more to happen. Anyway, before we get started, I, I want to tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. If you can see down below, the line right now is Ole Miss is favored by two and a half points. That line and all lines are brought to you by BetOnline.net on this show. The over/under right now is at sixty-one. It jumped five points, five points after um, the photo of KJ Jefferson got released on the internet. So, I mean, Vegas thinks KJ is going to play. What, what are your thoughts on these lines, John? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out because obviously I, I like having some fun with the lines and mm-hmm. looking at them too. I was so shocked where last week Arkansas opened up against LSU as just a two-point underdog, and it was kind of the same thing this week too. And I'm like, man, they, they kind of got it right with LSU, so maybe they know. I mean, people at Online obviously know what they're doing, mm-hmm. but it's it was just pretty shocking where – you know, Arkansas was able to take care of business last week, or at least in some cases cover the spread. This week, I mean, you may be in store for it because they obviously uh, did it right against LSU. Looks like they may have it right against Ole Miss too. Yeah, and it's I think it's going to be bitterly cold. Now, it's not going to be like Tom Coughlin and Green Bay cold, but it's going, it's going to be cold and it's going to be uncomfortable for somebody like Lane Kiffin who is kind of a Southern California guy. Um, so it might be a little bit difficult for him. But, you know, Jackson Darts from Utah – this isn't going to affect him. Um, you know, Quinshawn Judkins from Alabama, we might see, but he's going to be running so much, I don't know how cold he's going to be. Same goes for Rocket Sanders and KJ. Yeah. The The hard yeah. one would be the wide receivers. <laughs> yeah, well, and then add to it, at least when I checked the weather last, it's not only going to be around 30 degrees at kickoff, because it is a night game, but it's going to have winds coming from the north at like 10 to 20 miles per hour. So you're talking about, dude, I'm telling you, it might, it might be one of those things that uh, people just, uh, you know, load up on the cinnamon whiskey and hope <laughs> for the best as they walk in there. Cause it, it's going to be, it's going to be, I've been to cold games, but this, I'm serious. This might be the coldest game I ever end up going to. Really? Do they still have the um, temporary bleachers that they just put on top of the stadium down there? No, they got rid of those. Okay. Once they expanded the north end zone, and which is really nice, by the way. Hmm. Um, once they expanded that, they kind of did away with the uh, temporary bleachers and, and everything, too, which is probably good because that yeah, just seemed like a bad idea, especially because there's all students up there, and those are the late-arriving <laughs> students where they just got out of the frat houses and they probably had one too many. Don't need them up on that high rise up there <laughs> uh, that with temporary bleachers. Probably just seems something like that's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. It's Bet Online. It's where the game starts. So, John, before we get out of here, I do want to talk a little bit about where we see this going and to give our predictions on the game. I'll let you go first. Yeah, honestly, we're I'm basing this all on KJ Jefferson being healthy enough to go. That's that's what I'm basing this entire thing on. So if if it doesn't go this way and KJ doesn't play, no one can hold it against me. But I do believe that if K.J. Jefferson is healthy enough to play, I think the Razorback defense, the past two games, have played the best games they have uh, uh, completely. They've only given up one touchdown in the past six quarters, which is saying something because Arkansas' defense was atrocious for the most part in the beginning of the year. I think the defense has turned some corners. I think that they've gotten better. I think that this is senior night, and there's a lot of seniors on this team that want to go out on the right foot. Uh, And I think that K.J. plays – I think it's going to be close no matter what, but honestly, I think Arkansas wins if KJ's healthy. I, I do, just because I think the cold weather is going to be tough for both teams. But I think with KJ being there, it'll be a like kind of like a, a jolt for the team, saying, "Hey, this guy's here. My, our guy's here. Now let's get going. Let's go. Let's get let's get excited for it." And I think KJ is going to want this game so badly. He's gonna he's gonna put together a really good performance. So. I think it's close. I think Arkansas ends up winning this one, maybe a final field goal, something like that. But I'll say that uh, ends up being a low-scoring game of 21-17. to 17. Arkansas gets the victory. You know, I tend to agree with you on most everything. I, 
I think Ole Miss is going to come out in my head, you know, they're going to pound Quinshawn Judkins. You're going to see Jackson Dart running the football. I think they're going to avoid throwing the ball because this isn't a passing team. People were confused about Lane Kiffin. This team runs the ball 70% of the time. Um, in a game like this, they're kind of built for that. And Arkansas's offense is tailor-made for exploiting Ole Miss's defensive weakness. I told people on Twitter three weeks ago, even before the Texas A&M game, it's like if Ole Miss finishes 3-1, and one, I, don't I don't assume the loss is to Alabama. I assume the loss is to Arkansas. So I am going to go with Arkansas in a close game because Fayetteville is a house of horrors, and until you win the game in Fayetteville, I'm not going to just assume that you can do it. This, this has been a horrible matchup um, for years. I think the last time we won was that Houston nut return game in Fayetteville, and which, you know, that cra crazy. So if this game was in Little Rock, different story. This game was in Oxford, different story. This game in Fayetteville, I think that might – put them over the edge a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to take the Hogs in this game um 17 to 14. Oh wow. So well that's if that ends up being a game I'm with you it'll be a quick one. So mm. um uh but yeah and that the running game is going to be interesting between these two. Rocket Sanders had a great stretch of about 8 games in the past two games he's been non-existent but the blocking has been terrible for Arkansas too. But you know I, maybe I think I think KJ affects Rocket. I, I no I 100% believe that. Mm. Yeah, I think cuz when Malik or whoever's in there, the entire group of defensive players mm -hmm. are like, "Hey, key on this guy, and you know, just put a spy out on this guy because we don't, we don't, don't really respect their passing game." So, no, I'm with you. I think that's 100 percent the case. So, man, it's, it's it'll be a great game between these teams, yeah. though. I, I think that it's going to be entertaining and one for the books. And it is crazy that they haven't won since 2008. Like that's, yeah. I was at that game too. That was they don't ago. lose in Little Rock. They yeah. don't win in Fayetteville. It's the strangest thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Razorback fans will take it. I mean, they need to get yeah. to one more win to get bowl eligible. So yeah, they can do it against the Ole Miss Rebels and avenge that loss from last year. I think they'll all take that all day long. Yeah, it should be pretty good. Anyway, um, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss and Locked On Razorbacks podcast your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. It's Locked On Sports Today. It's available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. John, thank you so much for coming by today. Um, safe travels to the game. And, of course, if you go there, stay warm, man. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. We're having a gumbo tailgate for this one. So it's going to be a fun time there. Hitting out in Fayetteville and freezing our you-know-what's off, man. It'll be great. Yeah, it's not in Little Rock, so it's not going to be tailgating on the golf course, right? Yeah, thank goodness for that because that got really <laughs> old and I don't think anybody wants to deal with that anymore. So, yeah, we'll take Fayetteville all day long. Oh, before we get out of here, is that potentially going away soon enough or are they going to have to yeah. play a game? Yeah, I think uh, 2025, they had to amend the contract with War Memorial. And then 2025, they play Arkansas State there. And it's like the first time ever. And so uh, they're gonna. that's going to be the swan song. Uh, they're not going to play any more games there, which they shouldn't. I mean, no. dude. You can't be playing, can't be losing home games to play in a glorified big high school stadium, you know, where the locker rooms are in terrible condition. Like, it's just, it's not what it used to be. So, yeah, after 2025, that'll be the final game, and it's going away. And honestly, I think it's best for the, for the program for that to happen. All right, John, I will see you later. Safe travels, man. All right, appreciate it, man. Thanks as always.